Hello and welcome back. Uh, we are going to proceed from where we left during the last video and that is question number 15. But before then, if this happens to be your first time on this channel, please take a second and hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a video like this, you will, ne you will never uh, miss it. So let's get straight away to question number 15. So question number 15 states that a trader bought two types of bulbs A and B at 60 shillings and 56 shillings respectively. Uh, she bought a total of 50 bulbs for both types uh, for both types at a total cost of 2,872 shillings. So determine the number of type A bulbs and uh, that she bought. Okay. So we are told that this trader bought two types of bulbs. That is bulb A or type A and type B. Okay. So and then we are told that she bought these two types of bulbs at 60 shillings, that is for bulb A, so that is one bulb. One bulb of type A goes at 60 Kenyan shillings, and then one bulb of type B, so one bulb she bought at 56 shillings. Okay, so and then uh, we are told that she bought uh, a total of 50 bulbs, that is for both types, both type A and type B. In total, they were 50. And the total cost that she spent was 2,872. So the total cost. The total cost is Kenyan shillings, 2,872. And then the total number of bulbs is uh, 50. So now we have this information. So how do we go about it? So we are going to form or we are going to look for a relationship between this information, between the total number of bulbs and the cost and so on. So look at this. If we assume that uh, this trader bought X number of bulbs, Okay, remember, rem remember we don't know the exact number of bulbs for each type. We only know the total number of, of bulbs. So if we assume that she bought X bulbs, that is for type A. And then for type B, she bought Y bulbs. Okay, and we know that the total number of bulbs is 50. Think of an equation that we can form with those three figures. Number of bulbs of A, X, of type B, Y. And then the total number is 50. So we can have X plus Y is equal to 50. So X is the number of types of bulb A, or rather or a number of bulbs of type A, and Y the number of bulbs of type B. And then the total number of bulbs is 50. Now, we are also told that one bulb of type A goes at 60 shillings. What about X bulbs? Yes, so X bulbs will go at 60 times the number of bulbs, which is X. So the total cost for bulb for type A is 60X. Okay? And then for type B, one bulb goes at 56 shillings and they are Y bulbs. So the total cost of, of type B is 56Y. So we can also come up with an equation with that information that the total cost for type A plus the cost of type B is equal to the total cost which is 2,872. Okay. 
So you can see that we have a set of simultaneous equations that we can solve for the values of x and y. Remember we are told to find the, the number of, of, the number of uh, bulbs of type A. Okay, so that is, that means finding the value of x. So, sometime back in the past, uh, we learned how to solve a set of simultaneous equations. Uh, but if you never had a chance to watch that video, I'm going to leave the link to it in the description box so that you can get to check out that lesson uh, in case you didn't uh, look at it. So there are many methods of solving uh, simultaneous equations. There is elimination method, there is uh, substitution, there is matrix method and many others. So for this case, uh, I'm going to use substitution method but you can also use other methods and then confirm thereafter whether they will still give us the same answer. So in substitution method, we're going to pick one of these two equations. Let's pick uh, this one. Let me use a different color. Okay. Let's pick this one. So x plus y is equal to 50. And then we can write x in terms of y. So we have x plus y is equal to 50. So x is equal to so we can subtract y on both sides so that on this side we are left with x only. So it's going to be x is equal to 50 minus y. And then we go to the next equation and then replace x with 50 or substitute x with 50 minus y. So we're going to have 60 and then instead of x we're going to substitute it with 50 minus y. Okay. And then we can now have plus 56y is equal to 2872. So we can find the value of y. So we can open this bracket. Okay, so uh, this is going to be 3, okay, 3000, okay, uh, minus 60y. And then plus 56y is equal to 2872. Okay. So, uh, we can put like terms together. So, what we can do is that we can uh, combine these two. So, negative 60y plus 56y. That's equal to negative uh, 4y. Okay. So, we're going to have 3000 minus... 4y is equal to 2872. And then we can, uh, we can subtract 3000 on both sides. Okay. So that on this side we are left with negative 4y is equal to, uh, so this one is going to be 2872 minus 3000. I believe it's negative 128 is that correct maybe you can confirm and then to get the value of y we divide through by negative 4 so y it becomes um so you can divide negative 128 divided by negative 4 uh, so that's 32 okay so remember y is the number of bulbs of type B, okay? But the question requires us to find the number of bulbs of type A, okay? Which is uh, represented by X. So what do we do? So uh, we have the total number of bulbs as 50. So and we have the number of bulbs of type Y as 32. So that means the remaining are for type A. So what do you do? You subtract 32 bulbs from the total which is 50. And that is going to be 18. I believe so. Yeah, 18 bulbs. So that is the number of bulbs of type A. So I believe we have understood that. Uh, let's 
move on to the next question which is question number 16. Okay, so question number 16 states that a bus applies between two towns P and R via Q daily. On each day, it departs from P at 8.15 a.m. and stops for 40 minutes at Q before proceeding to R. Okay, let's first try to visualize that. So we have three towns. We have P, R, and Q. So from this information, it seems town Q uh, is in between P and R. So because we are told that this bus uh, moves from town P to town Q, or rather uh, P to R via town Q. So this means that Q could be somewhere here. Okay? So, uh, we are told that on each day it departs from P at 8.15 a.m. And stops for 40 minutes at Q. So at Q it stops for 40 minutes. And then proceeds or rather before proceeding to R. Now, on a certain day, the bus took 5 hours and 40 minutes to travel from P to Q. Okay, so the bus took 5 hours and 40 minutes to travel from P to Q. Okay, so Okay, uh, home. And three hours and fifteen minutes, three hours and fifteen minutes to travel from Q to R. So from Q to R, it took three hours and uh, forty minutes. Okay, so the question is find in twenty-four hour clock system the time the bus arrived at R. So I believe we have uh, tried to visualize that question. Now, let's try to find the time that this bus arrived at R, or rather at Q, before stopping now for 40 minutes. So this bus, this bus left at 8.15 or departed at 8.15 a.m. from town P, and then spent 5 hours and 40 minutes on the way to Q. So let's find the time this bus arrived at town Q. So what do we do? From 8 a.m. or rather from 8.15 a.m. we add 5 hours and 40 minutes. So uh, for the minutes we have 5, 5 and then 8 plus 5 is 13. So what time is that? 13 55 okay now i believe uh, you have ever seen a watch or if you haven't i believe uh, you have seen a time running on your mobile phone so at 12 noon or during the day at midday so i believe your clock or your watch uh, reads the time as 12 zero zero noon Okay, before going to 12 or midday, let's say at 11.30, it reads 11.30 a.m., okay? So, at 12 noon or midday, or rather after after 12.00, so these hours and seconds, or rather hours, minutes, and seconds, uh, so this is midday, so Immediately, this second goes to 1, so this uh, this changes to p.m., okay? And then, if it reaches uh, 12.59, 59, so this is 12 and 59 minutes and 59 seconds, so if it jumps to the next second, your watch can either read 
thirteen zero zero okay or one zero zero pm so what is the difference between these two this is in the twenty four hour clock system and this one is in the twelve hour clock system so the twelve hour system ends at twelve noon so after after 12 noon it starts again from 1 but this time it's pm but for the 12 hour clock uh, for the 24 hour clock system after 12 it proceeds to 13 so if it reads 13 so that's the same as 1 pm if it reads 14 that's the same as 2 pm so let me ask you if it reads at let's say 5 or rather it reads 17.00. What time is that? So this is, how, what do you do? You subtract 12 hours. And this is 5.00 p.m. So the reason why I was explaining all this is uh, to make us not get confused. So at 13.55, this is the same thing as as 1.55 p.m. Okay? So this is the time when the bus arrived at town Q. And then we are told that every day this bus stops at town Q for 40 minutes. So after arriving at 1.55 p.m., it will spend 40 minutes at town Q. So let's see. Sorry. Let's see, after spending 40 minutes, uh, when will it depart from town Q? So let's add. So these are minutes. So 55 plus 40, that's 95 minutes. And then we have 1. Okay? But if, if you look at your watch, at no time will it read 1.95 p.m it always reaches at 60 60 minutes after 60 so 60 minutes is equivalent to 1 hour so if it gets to 60 it will not write 160 it will go to 2 pm so for this case when it got to 15959 so the next second it will be 2 pm so what do you do so we're going to subtract 60 minutes here so that we're going to have an additional 35 minutes and then the one hour that we subtracted we're going to add it to this other side where we have hours so it's going to be 2.35 p.m. I don't know whether we are together at that point let, let me know in the comments section whether you are still following okay uh, so this bus has now departed from town Q heading towards town R and we are told that it spent a total of 3 hours and 40 minutes on the way to town R so let's see at what time does it get or arrive at town R so let's add so this is going to be 5 7 75 minutes as we said after uh, if it passes 60 minutes we're going to sub we're going to carry that as one hour so we're going to subtract 60 minutes so that we have 15 minutes and then that one hour we shall add it to this other side where we have the hours so this is going to be 3 plus 5 3 plus 2 is 5 and then 6 so that is 6 15 p.m. okay so the, that is the time when this bus arrived at town R. But remember, we are told to give our time in 24-hour clock system. So what do we do? Let me take you back to where we had 13.55. So we said after, so that if, if your clock reads 13.00, that's the same as 1 p.m., 14.00 is the same as 2 p.m. and so on. So if it's <coughs> at 6 p.m. 
who at what time will will it be in 24 hour clock system what do you do we're going to add 12 hours okay so we're going to have 12 and then we add it to 6 15 so that is going to be 18 15 hours and remember when we are writing our time in the 24 hour clock system we don't say or we don't uh, write it as pm or am what we do is just we write hours and we don't put a semicolon uh, between 18 and 15 we just write it as 18 15 hours so that is the time when this bus arrived at town r so i believe you have gotten something if you have understood or not let me know by dropping your comment uh, on the comment section and I will be glad to respond to each and one every one of you uh, so let's meet in the next video as we pick up uh, from the next question goodbye for now